This is Karen. Welcome, everybody. I am Shane. Today, we're looking at part two of telling the story of the raven. raven. And the vocabulary words are heal. Heal. Your wounds need time and medicine to heal. Image. Image. Some of the images in the book are frightening for young children. <gasps> Divine. Divine. I felt a divine presence when I stood in the temple. Yeah, that was me. I was standing next really? to you. Really? Yes, I'm divine. <laughs> Identify. Identify. In this culture, snakes are identified with the moon. Really? Mm. Didn't know that. Mm. Emperor. Emperor. Everyone feared and hated the cruel emperor. Mm. So we're talking about the interesting ravens, right? Mm. Last time we we're talking about how ravens are associated with you know, death and destruction and all mm. the negative things. Right. But today we're going to talk about you know some of the positive things that you know they also represent. Ooh, some cool mm. positive mythology. That's right. So in ancient Greece, the ravens were a symbol of Apollo, oh. which was the god of healing and truth. Oh. And also the Greeks used to use ravens raven to tell the future. So if the Ooh. ravens fly south or east, and that means something good will happen. Oh, nice. Well, I know Norse mythology, mm -hmm. Odin is like the leader of all the gods, the ruler of all gods. All right. And he, we see him with ravens on each one of his shoulders. Okay. Because they were his Messengers. Messenger, like sending messages to people? Yeah, so basically he would send, he would have messages, you know, to the people and they would come and be delivered from ravens. So they were considered quite positive. Okay, well, there are a lot of interesting stories about ravens. So yeah. how about we just read more about them? Let's do that. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> Telling the story of the raven. While ravens have often been negatively associated with the supernatural, this wasn't always the case. In some cultures, they played positive roles. In ancient Greece, the raven was a symbol of Apollo, the god of healing and truth. It was also used by the Greeks to tell the future, and a raven flying from the south or east was considered a positive sign. Images of Odin, the ruler of gods in Norse mythology, show a pair of ravens on his shoulders, and these birds were considered divine messengers. Ravens also represented the goddess Morrigan, who guided warriors during battle in Celtic myth. Today's lesson is called Telling the Story of the Raven, Part 2. Hi, I am Jeff. And I'm Mike. We're telling the story of the bird, the raven. The big black bird, kind of like a crow, but ravens throughout a long time, of a lot of history, have had many myths and legends attached to them. Yesterday, we learned about some of these myths. Early, early Jewish people apparently saw ravens burying their dead, and that's where the human tradition of burying dead people came from. And in England, if the ravens fly away from the Tower of London, where, they are, where the, some still live today, then Britain will fall, and I guess the... The king will or queen will lose their crown and terrible things will happen because of the power of the raven. Anyways, let's go ahead and start today's lesson. It begins by saying, while ravens have often been negatively associated with the supernatural, this wasn't always the case. So sometimes people do associate ravens with death and destruction and with the ghosts of murdered people and stuff like that. But this wasn't always the case. This wasn't always true. Get this, in some cultures, they even played, or they played, positive roles. Oh, there you go. All right, so we're learning that, yes, ravens might be scary or frightening in some cultures and traditions, but in other places, the ravens are the good guy. They're not always the bad guy. It says, in ancient Greece, the raven was a symbol of Apollo, the god of healing and truth. Sure, Apollo was one of the greatest of the Greek gods, associated with healing, truth, medicine, the sun, you know, powerful, positive things. And if ravens are associated with healing, then ravens are associated with 
doctors and hospitals and all that good stuff. That's not so bad. No, nah, it sounds good to me. Yeah. Healing is great. Yeah. Anyways, yes, here we've got the verb heal to talk about. To heal is to get better. Usually when we use this word heal, we're talking about wounds and cuts and things like that. If you cut yourself, okay, yeah, you get hurt. But over time, that cut will go away because your body heals itself, okay? You cut your skin, but the skin will reform and you'll be as good as new because you have healed. Otherwise, yes, if you recuperate from an illness, if you get better, you heal. Your body gets better, it heals. For example, your wounds need time and medicine to heal. Mm. Now there's more. It was also used by the Greeks, so the raven was mm. also used by the Greeks to tell the future. And a raven flying from the south or east was considered a positive sign. Wow, okay. So yeah, the Greeks and the Romans after them often believed in this sort of fortune telling by watching birds and nature. So ravens were one of these sort of good signs, you know, things will do well next year, that's because we saw a raven fly by. So that is a good thing. How about this? It says, images of Odin, the ruler of gods in Norse mythology, show a pair of ravens on his shoulders. And these birds were considered divine messengers. Hmm, we've already learned about the raven's role as a messenger, carrying messages from the gods, and this was certainly true in the northern European countries that were ruled by the Norsemen or Vikings, that kind of thing. If you think of Odin and Thor and Loki, not the Avengers superheroes, but the ancient gods from Norse mythology, this is what we're talking about. And when you see pictures or images of Odin, the king of the Norse gods, he's often surrounded by ravens. An image here, this noun just means a picture, all right? It could be a photograph, it could be a drawing, it could be a painting. It's not words, it's a picture. It's something that represents something else out there in the world. For example, some of the images in the book are frightening for young children. We often use the word image because it's, when we're using it, it's not important if it's a drawing or a painting or a photograph. It's just something that you can look at and see with your eyes. Now, in this sentence, we also have the adjective divine to talk about. If something is divine, it's holy. It's connected to or associated with God or the gods. For example, I felt a divine presence when I stood in the temple, yes, I felt like God was there with me. Odin? Odin was, th was there in spirit, yes, wow. I felt it. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. What a presence it was. <laughs> and if we go a little bit of a distance away from the Norselands, the, the Scandinavian areas, to maybe the ancient islands of Britain, it says ravens also represented the goddess Morgan who guided warriors during battle in Celtic myth. So this is the sort of story and legend that would have arisen, as I said, in Britain, Scotland, Ireland, places like that. They too had a goddess, Morrigan. She was a powerful warrior goddess and she often had ravens with her as she went off into battle. So again, ravens there are, are good guys helping the goddess. Amazing. Let's take a break and we'll be back with more about ravens. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。我们在第一天的课文读到，渡鸦在神话里面占有重要的地位，而且在某些地方，它们带有死亡和毁灭的意涵。有些人认为啊，它们是被谋杀的人的鬼魂。那以前也有人认为它们是惨死的人变成的恶灵。好，尽管人们常常把这个渡鸦跟负面的超自然事物联想在一起，可是也不是都这样啦。好，当我们说 This wasn't always the case。意思就是说，不一定是这样，并非总是如此。好，那这边还有一个补充单字叫 supernatural。supernatural 它可以当名词表示超自然，也可以当形容词表示超自然的。好，课文接着提到，其实，在某一些文化里面，渡鸦扮演着正面的角色，像在古希腊，渡鸦是阿波罗的象征。阿波罗在希腊神话里面是主管治疗和真理的神。那除此之外呢？希腊人也会用渡鸦来预测未来，从南方啊，或是从东方飞来的渡鸦就被认为是好预兆。刚刚 Michael 老师有用到 fortune telling 这个字 
Fortune Telling， 它是拼作 F O R T U N E， 连字号 T E L L I N G。那这个名词它表示算命或是预知未来。如果我们把 Telling 的字尾 I N G 改成 E R， 变成 Fortune Teller。Fortune teller 就表示算命师。好，那在北欧的神话里面，这个众神之王奥丁，也就是雷神所有的爸爸，他的形象就是有一对渡鸦在他的肩膀上。那这对鸟被视为是神的使者。还有还有，在凯尔特神话里面，渡鸦则是代表了战场上引领战士的女神魔力干。那这些都是正面的形象。好，我们来看三个单字 h e a l h e a l 它是动词，表示治愈或是痊愈。就要老师在解释单字时用到 recuperate。recuperate 它是动词，表示恢复或是康复。那它是拼作 r e c u p e r a t e。好，那这个字呢，它意思其实就跟 recover 差不多啦。下一个单字 image。Image， 它表示形象或是图像，是当名词。那么 ，divine，divine， 它是形容神的或是上天给予的。在这边补充一下 ，Mike 老师在讲北欧神话的时候，他有提到 Norseman。Norseman 就是诺尔斯人，也就是古斯堪的纳维亚人。那 Norseman 是拼作 N O R S E M E N。还有提到 Vikings。Vikings 就是维京人，那它是拼作 V I K I N G S。好，接回到课文中。Telling the story of the raven. Eastern traditions feature a raven with three legs that's identified with the sun. In one Japanese story, a chieftain gets lost while traveling through enemy lands. To rescue him, the sun goddess sends the three-legged raven to guide him to safety. The chieftain later becomes the first emperor of Japan, and since then, ravens have been treated as a sign of luck in the country. Okay, let's learn some more about the raven. Get this: Eastern traditions feature a raven with three, count them, three legs that's identified with the sun. Three legs. Three legs. I guess a bird could have three legs. It's not that weird. But this raven was identified or connected with the sun. When we use identify in this way, we're not exactly saying you're looking at someone and say, "I know that person. I can identify them." Often here, we're using it more as a way to connect things, to make a link or something that's common between both of them. For example, we often identify countries. With flags or with special colors or something like that. If you see someone wearing a shirt that's red, white, and blue with stars all over it, that might make you identify that shirt or that person as being American because those colors, the stars, the design, it has a connection to this country. For example, in this culture, snakes are identified with the moon. Ah,、oh, maybe in. Ancient Egypt didn't they identify snakes with the gods and powerful things like that? Anyways, this story about the three-legged raven we should point out is an Eastern tradition, so it's from Asia, this part of the world. There you go. Speaking of Eastern traditions, in one Japanese story, a chieftain gets lost while traveling through enemy lands, and to rescue him. The sun god ascends the three-legged raven to guide him to safety. So there you go. This Eastern tra tradition, it's a Japanese tradition. How cool! That is cool. And what happens to the chieftain? It says the chieftain later becomes the first emperor of Japan, and since then ravens have been treated as a sign of luck in the country. So this powerful man, when he was a little bit younger, was helped by a raven. And then when he became the emperor, he remembered that, and so he was sort of like, "Yeah, ravens are cool. They help me. They're important. Respect." Okay. Before we take a break, let's talk about the noun emperor. An emperor is like a king, only better. You see, a king might rule or be in control of a single country. An emperor. Is a ruler over many different lands and places. So, 
Long ago, there was the British Empire, and the emperor of the British Empire would not only control England and Britain, but other colonies besides, like India and places like that. Yes, a king is good, an emperor, that's even better in terms of power. For example, everyone feared and hated the cruel emperor. So yes, if you are an emperor, don't be cruel, don't be nasty. That way, people will love you and they won't uh, hate you. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be back after this. 在东方的传统里面，三只脚的渡鸦被认为跟太阳有关。像日本就有一个故事是说，某一位酋长在穿越这个敌人领土的时候迷路了。那太阳女神为了救他，就派了三角渡鸦把他引领到安全的地方。后来这一位酋长成了日本第一位天皇。那从那时起，渡鸦在日本就一直被视为是好运的象征。这边出现两个单字 ，identify。Identify， 它是动词，表示确认或是识别。当我们说 identify 某人或某事物 with 什么什么，就可以用来表达使某人或某事物跟什么什么密切相关，或者是把什么什么视为同一个事物。好，下一个单字 emperor。Emperor 表示皇帝、君主。那顺便学一下 ，Empire，Empire Empire 是指帝国，它是拼作 E M P I R E。这样老师提到说，以前大英帝国的统治范围非常广，还有包含许多的海外殖民地。那老师说的 British Empire，British Empire 就是用来指大英帝国，还有 Colony。Colony 可以用来表达殖民地、聚居地，它是拼作 C O L O N Y。解华课文中 ，Telling the story of the Raven. Ravens play a variety of roles in different tales that help us make sense of our world. These highly intelligent animals have shown that they are no ordinary birds. All right, everyone. That just about does it. Our article on ravens is just about in the books. Only one paragraph remains. Yes, ravens play a variety of roles in different tales that help us make sense of our world. That much is for certain. Absolutely, they're much more interesting than I thought. These highly intelligent animals. Have shown that they are no ordinary birds.、Mm. I have to admit, I was a fan of ravens. I read a Nat Geo story about them years ago and was impressed with how intelligent they are in the real world. But now, knowing all of their sort of historical and mythical connections, they really are fascinating winged creatures. So, what do you think? Do you know other stories that feature ravens? Oh, of course. One story I know that has ravens in it is *The Raven* by Edgar Allan Poe. Well,、oh. this story has one raven, but it talks. It says, "Nevermore." It's a very spooky ghost story by Edgar Allan Poe. I encourage you guys to check it out. All right, everyone. With that, our lesson is now in the books, and it's time for us to say bye bye. Take care. 看了这两天的课文，我们会发现渡鸦在世界各地的不同传说里面扮演着各式各样的角色。这些高智商的动物确实是不平凡的鸟类。我们最后帮同学们补充两个用法 ：a variety of 什么什么就表示各式各样的什么什么。那么 no ordinary。No ordinary 是用来描述特别的、稀有的人事物，用来表达不平凡的或是不寻常的。好啦，那么以上是这个讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍文法重点是复合形容词。什么是复合形容词啊？有时候我们会看到一些形容词呢，用连字号，呃，把它们连在一起，像是 a three-year-old boy， 一个三岁的男孩，其中这个 three-year-old， 我们用连字号，呃，把它连在一起，那就是复合形容词，用来形容三岁的。好，那复合形容词呢，是用连字号来连接两个以上的字形成的。我们以下就介绍几种复合形容词。第一种是由副词搭配形容词构成的复合形容词，像 all black 用连字号连在一起就是全黑的。
。第二种呢，是用副词搭配现在分词构成的复合形容词，像是 fast growing， 就是指成长快速的。好，那第三种呢，是副词。搭配过去分词，把它构成这个复合形容词，像 well known 就是为人所知的。好，那么第四种呢，是由形容词搭配名词构成的复合形容词，像 long term。long 跟 term 呢，一个是形容词，一个是名词，把它配在一起就是长期的。好，第五个呢，是形容词搭配。名词后面加 ed 很特别吧？好，形容词搭配名词加 ed 构成的复合形容词有像是 big eyed 大眼睛的 ，short haired 短发的，有没有发现这个 i 后面有 ed 结尾？还有 hair 头发也有 ed 结尾。好，那么第六个呢是由名词搭配名词后面加 ed 所构成的复合形容词，像 apple cheeked。就是脸像苹果一样红润的，我们在 cheek 脸颊后面加上 ed， 就是那个你不要这样的看着我，我的脸会变成红苹果。徐怀钰的歌好老啊！再来看第七个，是由名词搭配现在分词构成的复合形容词，像是 problem solving 就表示解决问题的 ，award winning 就是得奖的。好，再来看下一个是。数字搭配名词加上 ed 所构成的复合形容词，像 three-legged 是指三条腿的，那么 two-sided 是指双面的。好，那么最后一个呢，是由数字搭配名词所构成的复合形容词。那同学们要特别注意喽，这个组合里面的名词啊，一律是用单数表示，像 four year 就是四年的。One way 就是单向的，还有 five star 就是五星级的。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。除了 I don't understand， 你还可以用这些话来表示我真的不懂。Hello everybody, welcome. I am Shane. I'm Ayla. Hello. Hey. Do you have any English questions for me today? Yes， 我昨天看到了一句话，它叫做 "It's Greek to me"， 它跟希腊有什么关系？可是他说这个我不懂。Have you have you seen Greek alphabet before? Ah,、oh, like alpha, alpha, beta, beta 来后置帮我们 ，delta something like that, right? 就是哦， oh, 就是因为希腊文它是扭来扭去的， yeah. 所以连。连他们外国人都看不懂。Right, because for us we use words. We don't have like this very weird picture. It looks like a picture. Ah. So we feel、uh, oh so weird. 还有其他的说法吗 ？Oh, because it, was that even English? Was that even in English? So so you say something to me, right? Yeah. And I just feel so weird. Or you you say something. It's very complicated. So I say, was that even English? Was that? Even in English,、uh, 就是有时候我们会这样说，就是你到底在讲什么啊？ Uh, 就是就算你讲中文，我也听不懂。那、uh, 如果对于外国人来说，就算你连讲英文，他也听不懂。<笑>那他在讲什么 ？Was that even English? <笑> Or you can say, Can you give that to me in English? Can you, can you give that to me in English?、Uh, can you give that to me in English? Uh, uh, so the feeling is like, say it one more time. This time, English, please. 哦、oh, ，就是。你可以再说清楚一点吗？用我的语言，但其实他真的用英文在讲啦。<笑>可是因为他没有讲得很清楚，我觉得很复杂。哦、oh, ，Can you give that to me in English? Can you give that to me in English? 可是都是英文的，很无聊哎、欸。有没有其他的<笑> ？You're so picky. <笑> okay, I can think of one. Okay, I can't make heads or tails of it. I can't make heads. Or tails of it. Right. The idea is I don't know what is the head and what is the tail. I don't know what's the top and what's the bottom. Oh, 我真的搞不懂，搞不清楚。你搞不清楚头尾到底是哪一个是头，哪个是尾，所以就会就会分不清楚说啊，到底是哪一个。Means I have no idea. I don't know. 我真的我真的不懂。那没关系，我们今天 live action 就让你懂。Yeah, now you know. Live action. Live action. Check this report for me and tell me. It's a financial report, so it's Greek to me. It won't be too hard to understand, I think. Can you give it to me in English? I'm bad at numbers, so I can't make heads or tails of it. 
maybe you could try to start from this one. It's just one page. Is that even English? Number one, it's Greek to me. Number two, was that even English? Number three, can you give that to me in English? Number four, I can't make heads or tails in this.